If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is gonna be a book recommendation video with a nice twist to it. This time it's going to be books that weren't quite a five stars, they weren't a favorite book, but I think they're worth a shout out. I feel like on booktube it's very easy to get in a rut of always talking about the same books over and over again. You see them everywhere, everyone seems to give them five stars, but I still think it's fun to talk about books that maybe were three or four stars, and that I maybe have loved the premise or maybe I loved the characters, but other things were kind of weak. Maybe it's the writing, maybe it's something else, maybe it's just not usually my cup of tea. So it's different. And again, just because I didn't give it five stars doesn't mean you won't give it five stars. So let's talk about some of these books. Actually, this is my second time doing this. So I will link down below part one if you want more recommendations. The first book I wanted to mention is Long Way Down, which I gave four star two just because I don't read poetry. This is like poetry YA book and I actually listened to it as an audiobook which is a great way of going through it if you are interested in audiobooks but I had no idea how to rate this book because I never read anything quite like this and I haven't read anything quite like this ever since but I still think it is worth a shout out and recommendation because so many people would love this if you are into YA contemporary poetry maybe interested in, I would recommend it. You're following this young man who just learned that his brother was killed, gang related, and you follow him as he's going into the elevator with a gun to go and get revenge. And the book actually, like 300 pages, is just the 60 seconds of him going from the seventh floor to the first floor. And you can see everything that goes through his mind in every floor. Someone someone, a ghost, um, enters the elevator and you just start thinking more and more about everything that's going on and kind of deciding if he's going to do it. So something super different. I have seen it a few times on booktube. I feel that's kind of maybe why I picked it up. Maybe it was on Goodreads, but it's been years and it was only published in 2017. So it's still pretty recent, but I feel like it deserves more love. So if you are interested, would definitely pick up Long Way Down. You know what? Let's continue with poetry because again, it's just not my main genre. I haven't read that many, but I do think this one is a bit more popular, but still worth a recommendation. And it is The Poet X, which I also actually listened to as an audiobook. Definitely a good way of doing it. The author does uh, write in Spanish, although it is translated. I don't speak Spanish, so it was still nice to hear it uh, said out loud. Obviously made more sense <laughs> when it was explained, but it was still beautiful to hear it. And uh, also poetry, so I feel like out loud is just the best way. It's also a YA contemporary. This time you're following a young woman kind of talking about some of her issues with her family, with herself, her body. And my only issue, kind of why it didn't, get a five stars would be a spoiler so I can't really say it I'm just gonna mention that the ending wasn't what I wanted I had some issues with it if you're curious you can just check my goodreads review you can click to view the spoiler it was my only issue with it otherwise I do think it's definitely worth a read I believe it was one of the goodreads maybe not winner but at least nominees in the poetry section of that year that's why I picked it up and definitely something I enjoyed more than I expected. So if you want to get out of your comfort zone, would recommend The Poet X. The next thing I wanted to mention is Arc by Ver Veronica Roth, the author of Divergent. I'm always curious to see what authors that wrote like a big, you know, very famous uh, series, what, what else will they come out with? Will it be as good? Usually not quite, but I was still interested because, you know, Divergent, the ending, I think we were all a little mad about it. So I wanted to try this short story by her. It is part of the Ford collection, which is a bunch of kind of sci-fi related one. This one is 33 pages, so it's very short. I gave it a 3.75.5 because it is super different from all of the other short stories in that collection. This one is the most, I keep saying melancholic. That's like the best way of describing it. It wants to be hopeful. It's kind of still sad. The planet went to and um, you're following this girl who is part of the people that are still on there trying to grab as many seeds and plants and catalog them before we just leave forever. So you can kind of imagine the setting. It's very character driven. It's fairly short. So that's probably why it wasn't like a perfect five star for me. But it's definitely something that if you want that feel. I wanted to give it a shout out in this video because I can't see in what else I will talk about it. Like I can't imagine a category and I do a lot of recommendation videos, but it's kind of really hard to mention it more, but I do think it's worth a little recommendation. You might not give it five stars, but I think there's something special about it. 
I want to talk about contact by Carl Sagan because I never hear pretty much anyone talk about it. It's definitely older. Um, there's also a movie which I feel like people might be more familiar with. I did watch the movie right after reading the book, which makes you really notice the differences when you do that. In my case, what I've resented was that in the movie, there's a romance. Hollywood always does that. Like the romance was so not necessary with that book, but it is one of the first, first contact, contact, <laughs> with alien books that I've read. And I love that premise. We all know this at this point. In this case, uh, you might hear a, uh, like a message from a different planet, the vegans. <laughs> That's what I put in my Goodreads review. This video, this book is about uh, vegans, just not the ones you're thinking about. And uh, they're trying to understand what's going on. And I'm not going to go into more details just in case. I think it's very interesting. I really like heavy uh, science first contact with alien books. I just really love them. But the older ones, more classic ones, definitely tend to have really dry writing, like really dry, especially towards the end. And I do appreciate that especially again, older sci-fi tend to make the aliens feel very alien. And I appreciate it. It's just pretty dry. So that's why for me, it wasn't a five star, but I do think it's worth a shot if you are someone that really wants to read, you know, the first ones kind of thing. I loved it in that sense. So I do think it's worth a little shout out. I actually want to read more by the author. I do have quite a few of his nonfiction on my show. I need, to, I need to get around to doing that. But yeah, definitely worth a shot if that's your jam. Another one I wanted to give a shout out to, even though, again, it wasn't a five star, but still worth a mention, is Walking to Alderbaran by Adrian Tchaikovsky, the author of Children of Time, which you've probably heard me mention if you've seen any of my videos, the giant spiders against humanity. <laughs> It's a really great novel, but I wanted to read more by him. And this was a novella. It's about a hundred pages and it is really strange. Humanity uh, sees this thing really approaching uh, our solar system and they send a team to try to explore it and figure out what it is. Kind of first contact with aliens and you're following this astronaut that is lost in there. And he's kind of not fully there anymore. You don't know exactly what happened. He seems to be possibly the, the last that has survived. You have no idea what's going on. You don't know if he's reliable and things are weird. And the ending is weird and the whole thing is weird. But if you are curious, I do think it might be worth a shot. It's definitely very different. But again, aliens should feel kind of alien in my head. So yeah, again, I don't know in what else I would include it. Maybe like a first contact with the alien kind of recommendation video. But yeah, I thought it was worth mentioning because it's definitely different. The next one, I've definitely talked about this series. So it's not like a recommendation you'll never hear from me again. But I still think it was worth mentioning. I feel like you hear a lot of people talk about uh, The Long Way to Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers, me included. But I feel like you don't get a lot of hype with the rest of the series because the first book was a 4.5 star for me, like definitely really solid. I included it in a beginner's guide to sci-fi too. If someone that just wants to get into it, especially if you're a YA reader, I think this is a really great way to start reading adult sci-fi. With that said, the rest of the series wasn't a five star for me, but there's just something special about her writing. Um, I always say they're kind of wholesome, even though like some of the topics that she discusses are difficult. I feel like Wholesome might be more like the fourth book in that series or something, but it's just always super inclusive. She uses sci-fi and aliens to talk about topics like gender and sexuality, and it's just great. I, I just can't explain it. There's just something that works for me with her writing, and I thought I would give a shout out to the rest of the series. You do have to read the first book to read the second one. I feel like the two of the ones you could probably pick them up as standalones, although I do think you would understand some of the aliens, more of their background, if you read at least the first one. So I still think it's like a series, even though they're more companion novels. So last but not least, I wanted to mention A House at the Bottom of a Lake by Josh Mellerman. This is an adult horror book. I don't read a ton of horror. I feel like it takes me a lot to feel uncomfortable while reading a scary book. You know, I never feel like they're scary. This one might not have been a five star, but it made me so uncomfortable, so uncomfortable. You're following these two teens that go on a first date on a lake on a little boat and they discover a house at the bottom of the lake and they kind of keep going back to try and explore it. And I did not care about the romance whatsoever. And even like the story, <laughs> I didn't care that much about it. 
but I felt so uncomfortable reading it, like so, so, so uncomfortable. And since it doesn't happen often, I think it's worth a little shout out because it's very different. I haven't read anything quite like it. And if you are trying to read more books like that, I think it's worth adding to your list. The only thing I think of when I read this book is the spoiler that I can't mention. So again, check out my Goodreads review if you want to click and see that spoiler because that also made me uncomfortable, but in a completely different way. <laughs> so that's going to be it for today's video. Please let me in the comment section if you have read any of these books, what's your personal opinion on them? And mostly let me know which book you gave maybe like a three stars that you think are still worth a shot, depending if someone has a different taste than you, for example. So basically more books that aren't five star, but you know, worth a little shout out. Thumbs up, subscribe. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out and I will see you in my next one very soon. Bye.